Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to talk about how you can minimize the risk of having your files corrupted on your SD card after a very important shoot. This is gonna be a copy of the review. He said, my name is Shut up! Okay, there are a few things that I wanna talk about that you should not do. Firstly, the body cap and the lens cap thing that all these YouTubers do online. Do not use this hack to store your SD cards, guys. Brain Sri Lanka, SD cards are they're super expensive. The guys who use this are the YouTubers. Um, in the US and in other Western countries, it's not very expensive to go out and buy new SD cards. But us Sri Lankans, we use it for a very long time. Once you do store your SD cards on these on these like body caps, they're gonna be rattling about. When they're rattling about, you're constantly like introducing the SD cards to like micro impacts. Okay, now for the nerds out there, I'm, I'm sure you're gonna say there aren't any moving parts in an SD card, so you don't have to worry about it being jostled about in like a, a body cap in your bag when you're walking around. But there's only so much that a piece of plastic and a bunch of electronics can take. You keep doing that and after a while your SD cards are going to malfunction because they've been abused so much inside those lens caps. Imagine you running with that in your bag and it's constantly like I mean, There's so many alternatives that you can use. Number one, you if you can just invest maybe 20 to $30 on a proper SD card case or just use the tiny like capsules like things that the SD cards come in in the first place anyway. I'm sure that those things will protect your SD cards as well. Just do not put them on your lens cap. <laughs> Bad idea. Number two, do not let anyone buy your SD cards for you unless that person is a professional themselves. <sighs> Freaking bloody took going by and it's so loud. Uh, so as you become expert in your field, the type of equipment and the tools that you use become very specific in terms of features and compatibility. And if you go and buy SD cards that are not compatible with your device, you're gonna regret it. Small backstory, I recently bought an A7 III. If you haven't seen the unboxing, you should go and watch it. It's, it's, it's The link is somewhere around here. Not only was the A7 III my first full frame camera, it was also the first time I had a camera with two card slots. Now for people who don't know, when you have two card slots, you can create redundancies and backups so that if one card fails, you still have the footage on another card. And when you're doing professional shoots, you can't go to the client and say, I'm sorry, my footage got corrupted, especially if it was an event where it was a one-time only deal. You get one shot at it and that's it. So I went ahead and invested a little bit of money and got two 64 gigabyte SD cards. I only looked at the capacity and the write speeds and that's it. So I just bought the two cards home, I took them off their packaging and I didn't think too much of it, I just put it into my SD card case. The case that I carry all my cards in anyway and on, I got the shock of my life because I took them out on the day of the shoot a week later and I put them into my camera and the camera just told me that it can't read it, it there's an error and I my heart dropped, I thought I bought fake SD cards. So I just tried them on my uh, A6500 and it worked. And I was like, wait a minute, what's going on? Have I bought like a different card? Because I had no idea. The only thing that I knew about SD cards was that there's a write speed and then there's a, a capacity and that's it. So I came back home, went on Google and just, because at first glance, I really can't tell what the difference of my old cards and my new cards were. So I just went and Googled what the issue was. And luckily there was a firmware update for my A7 III so that I can continue to use those cards. But the main difference was such a minute thing that I wouldn't have spotted it unless I did my research online. And I'll link that video below, but you should not let other people who especially don't know what the exact requirement is to buy your cards for you because it might either end up being like really faulty and you might lose your footage or it might not be compatible at all. So, and the final point I really want to get across to you guys is for all those freelancers out there. If you guys are freelancing, do not, I repeat, do not hand your SD cards to any third party. I repeat, do not hand your SD cards to any third party to keep it overnight. Whenever I go for a, like a freelance shoot or an event shoot, I always carry my laptop with me so that I can dump the footage off my card onto my computer and then just put it onto a pen drive and give it to them. 
because the one time that I did end up having to give my SD cards uh, to the editors because the video had to be um, published like like that night. He just took the SD cards from me and just dropped it into in between a few pages of his notebook. And I was like, I'll go, you know, hand the footage personally to whoever needs it. And I did. And I'm, when I went there to the production house or the editors, they had this SD cards lying all over the table. They were ne next to food. They were next to like glasses of water. And it might be just an SD card for these guys who are editing, but you're going to be using these cards for quite a while. So you need to make sure that they are well protected and looked after because guys, you it's no joke. I mean, touch food so far, I've always had cameras with just one slot up until my A7 III and I never had any issues. But now I'm not taking any more chances. I'm making sure I use both my cards. And that's it guys. SD cards are very, very important things. Do not mess around with them. Make sure you look after them. Make sure you transport them well. Make sure you store them well. And trust me, you won't regret it because I have been handling my SD cards like they're, they're like my babies and I still haven't had any issue with them. But at least I get new cards every year or so. That's it guys for this video. Definitely go check out all of my previous videos. I've done unboxings of the lenses that I've bought recently, my camera, what I, what I carry in my camera bag. Subscribe if you guys want to see more of these videos and I'll see you in the next one.